Are Collingwood in the midst of a Premiership hangover? Where their crucial Round 3 win away at the Gabba keeps their season well and truly alive. At 0-4, it would have nearly been lights out. Now the draw ahead of them is still difficult, and you'd think if they made a run to top four, things like resting players and managing them would be out of the equation. That late season slump they endured in 2023 definitely can't be afforded this time around. Again, it was an important win, but questions still remain about their form. So if we compare the current day Collingwood team to others who endured a Premiership defence hangover, which means missing out in the top eight, are there similarities? Three examples in modern time are a great starting point to put side by side. We focus on the Hawks in 2009. They were coming off a big upset grand final win over Geelong and Shane Crawford's last season at the club. In hindsight, the fall off from Premiers in 2008 to ninth place on the ladder with a 9 win and 13 loss record in 2009 wasn't all that surprising. Unlike Collingwood, who were full of veteran players and leadership, Crawford, who was 33, was the only Hawthorne player in 2008 that was over 30. Luke Hodge, Jordan Lewis, Cyril Rioli and Brad Sewell were just a few at the time under 25 years of age. Spearheads Jordan Ruffhead and Lance Franklin themselves were just 21 years old. A few things went wrong across 2009. First of all, the most premiership players that played in a game for Hawthorne was just 16. Twice with wins against North Melbourne and Sydney, and once in a loss to Brisbane. No continuity, which is a common feature throughout these hangovers, was present in 2009. The youth of the team also fell back. In 2008, the team was 14th for average age and 15th for games played. In 2009 with no Crawford, the Hawks didn't have a single player over 30 when the season started. Perhaps the lack of top line experience hurt as most players dipped in performance. Franklin went from 113 total goals to 67, Ruffhead kicked 75 and fell to 51, while Rioli went from 24 to 21. Luke Hodge and Franklin were all Australian in 2008, but in the following year, not a single Hawthorne player made the team. They started off slow with a 1 and 3 first month, but did stabilise at round 12 at 6 and 5. However, two wins out of their next nine games pretty much sealed their fate. It did come down to a round 22 game against Essendon. The winner would make finals even with a negative win-loss record. Famously, without Ruffhead and Franklin, Hawthorne took charge at the half, but with Max Bailey doing his knee and Brad Sewell infamously getting knocked out by Matthew Lloyd, they were overrun. The little drop-offs, player availability and youth probably hurt Hawthorne in 2009, but they certainly aren't alone in these aspects hurting their Premiership defence. It looked like the Bulldogs were a great shot at going back to back in 2017. A young, hungry team with solid experience in Robert Murphy, Matthew Boyd, Easton Wood and Liam Picken looked well balanced on paper. But similar to the Hawks, things fell off slowly. Unlike Hawthorne in 09, the Bulldogs started well with four wins out of five games, including defeating Sydney again in round two and a close three-point win over North Melbourne. Little signs began to show drop-offs and individual players regressed horrifically. Tom Liberatore was dropped during the season, Jason Johannesson's run was limited, and even Marcus Bonampelli stagnated in his performance but it was the early cracks of the forward line that capitulated in the middle part of the year, resulting in a patch of form of just two wins from eight games. Travis Cloak from Collingwood failed, Tom Boyd had issues on the field, but real demons off it, and the decline of Jake Stringer led to him getting traded to Essendon at the end of the season. Throwing injury issues to Tory Dixon, Stuart Cramery and Clay Smith, it shows you the mass amount of problems that build up inside 50. They ended up winning four games in a row between round 17 and 20, but lost the last three games of the season 
to finish 11 and 11 and 10th on the ladder. Injury, team consistency, form issues, and overall hunger were the big problems for the Dogs in 2017. There are some patterns starting to form in these Premiership hangovers. Probably the best comparison for this Collingwood team is Geelong only a year before. The previous two sides were extremely young, but the Cats were the complete opposite. They were by far the oldest side ever to win a game, and that game happened to be the 2022 Grand Final. The following year was frustrating because at times Geelong looked great. Injuries did strike hard, especially in the back half. Tom Stewart went down with a knee injury early, Radagalia had hamstring concerns all throughout the season, and up forward, superstar Jeremy Cameron, who looked like he might kick 100 goals early on, hurt his shoulder in the Gary Rowan incident and never could fully recover. Then, the veterans who were so good during the grand final win streak fell off. Mitch Duncan had injury issues, and Cam Guthrie could only manage the first six games of the year. That's already five important players that just couldn't get continuity. And like the young Hawks and Bulldogs, certain players such as 2022 All-Australian Tyson Stengel, Sam De Koning and Max Holmes just were off their best. It added up to a 10 and 12 finish, although it felt for the season Geelong was better than their final record showed. So from the set examples above, how does Collingwood match up right now and are they really in a flux of a Premiership hangover? In all three of these Premiership slides, veterans are a key element. Hawthorne didn't really have any and the ones at the Bulldogs and Geelong either dealt with injury, had form declines, were in their last year or like Crawford and Selwood retired the season before. Steel Sidebottom was managed and he clearly has started off the pace, while Scott Penderbury was much better on Thursday, but still committed six turnovers. No doubt Jeremy Howe, Tom Mitchell and Brody Majacek return to form, which is important. Keep an eye on all these guys, because if they fall away, history shows you the team will too. Now Dan McStay with his ACL, and Nathan Murphy with concussion, are the only two big injuries right now. On the health front, Collingwood are in a fantastic position, far better than the other three teams mentioned. However, as we know, this can change very quickly. They have a relatively full squad to pick from, so it's a massive positive at this stage. Finally, the overall player form is still a bit early to get the full picture on. Hawthorne had an all-round dip in performance, especially up forward, while on the more extreme end like we saw at the Bulldogs, Legitimate stars in Liberatore and Stringer were at times completely out of the team. No one yet at the Pies has reached this point besides maybe Oleg Markov, and the big win on Thursday will be a confidence boost to everyone. Four games into the season for Collingwood, and compared to these sides, they're actually looking okay from a practical aspect. Injury gets a big tick, and the effort especially with tackling was supreme against Brisbane. The big question mark is the veterans, who in this side are all important pieces. If they hold up and get better, the Pies should too. So if you ask me if Collingwood are in a Premiership hangover, I think for now, the answer is no. They have played four top eight teams, and the turnaround in each game has been quick. Now will they be in the top four? I still doubt it. But in terms of sliding down the ladder to say 10th or lower, it's hard to see. There really isn't a whole lot of shame coming say 6th after a premiership run like they had, which really lasted over two seasons. But the side and its health is too good for a big hangover. Maybe they will endure a bit of a headache in 2024.